Joining us now here on the MMA Report on Radio Influence is one of the ladies that's going to be in the feature preliminary bout, Bellator 155. Of course, this is something you can watch on Bellator.com. It's Marlos Kuna, who was supposed to be fighting for the inaugural Bellator women's featherweight title. However, Julia Budd pulled out of this event uh, due to an undisclosed injury. Uh, Marlos, first off, I got to ask you, when you get that phone call, what goes through your mind when, when you hear that, that Julia is not going to be able to fight? Well, I was swearing uh, really loud. <laughs> I was really, really pissed. Yeah. Was was there all a thought of not fighting at all? Was it was there a thought of, of sit back and wait for Julia to to be ready to fight, or is it just one of those of equations of, uh, hey, I, I get I get paid to fight. I don't get paid to sit on the sidelines. Yeah, the last one because um, I was first. I was really well. I was bummed. But um, uh, after a few days, uh, Bellator reached out again and said, hey, we have a new opponent for you. And I was like, okay, it's not for a title fight, but I've been training so hard and uh, it takes a long, uh, it takes a while for me to get in the cage every time. So let's fight. Is it one of those things that it really, it's just be, you're grateful that Bellator was able to find somebody to step up on short notice? Because I'm sure there's not a lot of ladies out there that want to step up on, you know, two weeks notice to face you. Yeah, I was really grateful for that. And I think Alexis is uh, really uh, cool uh, for doing that as well. So, no, I'm, I'm happy to start. I can't wait. And, of course, you have gone to an Owen Bellator. This is Alexis's Bellator debut. She was supposed to debut last year, but uh, that did not do uh, – happened to do being uh, pregnant. Now she takes on here. Obviously, things didn't go well for her in the UFC. But overall, how much of a different fight is this from going from Julia Budd to Alexis Dufresne? Well, uh, if I look at her, I feel like I'm looking at myself because she's the same. I started Googling her, of course. And she's the same height as I have. Uh, I have. And uh, if I see her wrestling in the cage, I can tell she's very strong. So, um, and it's actually the same goes for Julia. Of course, I, but I only believe Julia is more experienced than Alexis is. But, you know, it's the, it's the MMA game, so it doesn't matter what your record is. If you get punched in the face, <laughs> you can uh, get punched in the face. You can get co- KO'd. So um, what I've learned in fighting is to never, ever underestimate a person. And if I look at her, I can think it can be a tough fight. Is it one of those things that's just a prime example about how in MMA you have to be ready for anything because the opponent can change right in an instance? Yeah, even as uh, when I was fighting uh, the last time, I would be on the uh, at the end of the card, and I was already warming up. And they said, "Oh, quit warming up! You you're uh, rescheduled to the main card." No, you have to be able to deal with stuff like that, and I'm, I'm I think I'm quite capable of doing that. I remember that night they they lost a heavyweight fight. I mean, how how does that does it is that more a mental situation of hey you you think you're you're a fight or two away from going out, and then someone comes in. Hey, go by the way, um, you're not going to be fighting until a little later. Is it, is it more mental as opposed to physical? Yeah, it's definitely mental. Yes, I mean physical doesn't matter. I mean you're trained that well, so it doesn't matter, and you can always fight. But uh, it, it's a mental thing, and you have to tell yourself, okay, it's fine. Let it go again. Let the aggression go. Relax and stay calm and relax. And then yeah, you have to, to get that that mental state back again until before you just step into the cage and you really aggressive and want to kill. And of course this fight a part of the preliminary card of Bellator 155, which I'm sure you're very aware when when it was announced that your fight against Julia is going to be on the prelims. There was a lot of people that had things to say. Julia uh came out publicly, talked about how she was, you know, disappointed that the fact that it was on the preliminary card. Is it is it one of those things where you were disappointed, but at some point you had to sit there and go, I, I can't let this, I can't be worried about it because no matter what, I'm stepping into the cage. It doesn't matter whether it's an online show or, or it's a television show. At the end of the day, my opponent's trying to take my head off. Well, you know, it, it, well, actually there are two things. Um, I think you always have to fight, and basically they hire me to fight, so they decide, well, I'm fighting if you. Even if if nobody's watching in the in the venue, I will be fighting there, no problem. I, I'm not that arrogant. On the other hand, I do think if you look at the the popularity of the females in MMA, from a business point of view, I think it's very wise to put women on the main card. You know, people like it. It will become more mainstream. And if you look at for myself, from my perspective, even I, I love this game for a very long time. 
that I like watching women fight better than to watch the men. It's not like the women are better, but I can identify with them better. So if you want to gain 50% more audience, put women on the card. So, you know, for me, it's quite simple. Did I see where you were doing some uh, some analyst work for the over in the Netherlands for the past UFC show? Yes, I did, but I had permission. <laughs> I didn't do it uh, <laughs> without any permission. Uh, yeah, no, <laughs> I, 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 I was <laughs> I, I wasn't I wasn't going down that route. I mean, I thought it was going to kind of say <laughs> is God. when you're <laughs> when you're analyzing fights, does it allow you to to look at the fight game a little different as opposed to you being the fighter in the fight? Well, actually, yeah, I feel like uh, because when you when you have the European cards, there are a lot of newcomers and they're not that uh, well known. So I had to watch all the fights of those dudes and girls. Well, there weren't that many girls, but a lot of guy fights. And um, I really felt like uh, because I, not, I had like a trainer uh, role, so I really had to analyze them. What did they do? What's good? Oh, how should you attack them? And I feel like that has really helped me as a fighter too. So I'm really happy to do that. And, of course, your fight coming up here against Alexis Dufresne, Bellator 155. Of course, you'll be able to see Marlouz's fight on the online preliminary card, bellator.com. Uh, ultimately, what, what, what is the key to victory for you in this fight? I think it's televised. I might be wrong, but I think it's televised. Okay, victory is the killer mode on, and I, I always tell it my coach, like, I'm getting this knockout, and then I win on an arm bar. But I'm really focusing on a knockout, and we will see what happens. And, of course, everyone will be able to watch this. Marlos, as always, appreciate the time. Good luck in the fight. Thank you, too.